Hey guys, Ash from Off Grid Mojo with an update here. <clears throat> uh, here I am at uh, Nyora Raceway and Recreation Reserve. Uh, I've just come here to spend the night because it's just down the road from where I keep the quad. And uh, I just wanted to be really close to the storage shed just in case something happens. Uh, I didn't get to go on the maiden voyage really because the trip from where I left from to, to here, uh, Google Maps said it was 3 hours and 15 minutes. Well, on the, mag on the Green Speed Magnum trike, it was 7.5 hours, uh, and I was absolutely knackered, so I've just had a bit of a rest, and I've packed this up a little bit, and I'm just going to stay here for the night. Hopefully no one moves me on. I'm in a sort of a, you know quiet little cul-de-sac here and I'll just give you a look around uh, some houses over the back there and there's the the rail trail through there the start of it that's actually the start of the extension um, some tennis courts here some more houses up through there or actually I think that's the primary school and the raceway is over back yonder way there's a footy oval there um, some club rooms there's a man shed up through there so yeah, I'm basically just here, um, and I've got to be honest, and I'm going to be, that there is just too much weight in this uh, semi-trailer. Uh, I, I ended up being on setting number nine just to go up a hill, uh, and it wasn't even that steep a hill, um, and I had it on also... I'm not sure whether you say highest gear or lowest gear, but the easiest gear that you can actually go on, uh, I was on that, I was barely moving, um, and that was only up a very slight hill, so I'm, I may end up, well, not may, I will have to tweak the Bafun controller uh, with one of those special cables that you can get and get in there and, you know, put it on steroids, basically. And then when I get the new battery, I should have enough power to go at least 50, 60 k's in a day. Uh, and then, failing that, I'll start removing stuff um, that, that weighs a lot, just so I can get around. But we'll see. I mean, it's early days, you know. Uh, it's about to start to rain here in a second, so uh, I might uh, head inside at the moment, but... You can see there, just behind the back wheel, there's the drop box that I, uh, that I made for it. And um, I actually haven't packed it with everything yet. There's a little bit of food in the, in the fridge. Um, and that's about it, really, because the storage shed where I keep this is just down the road. Uh, the water tank's not even in there. I'll be going back to the storage shed in the morning for a coffee and to grab the rest of the stuff and to decide which route I'm going to go for this maiden voyage because the route that I came in up the South Gippy Highway is hilly as all hell and from sort of Lang Warren area to the start of the Bass Coast Highway coming up Browns Road is also extremely hilly and I mean I was on the Magnum Green Speed trike but I was knackered mate um, absolutely knackered uh, haven't done a ride like that in a while the last time I did a ride like that was actually on the Southern Rail Trail um, and uh, yeah I'm just exhausted mate so I'm going to have a couple of uh, vinos and have an early night. Alright guys, talk to you soon, ciao. Okay just going to show you a few things guys, um, a little bit more detail, we just had a good rain and it rained last night and it's been raining off and on today and I'm happy to say that there's not a single leak in the semi-trailer so I've done a good job there just going to show you inside here and I'll try and explain it a bit better to you um, we had some questions relating to whether I was going to start showing a more detailed um, video or schematic diagram if you like uh, about how I've wired this system up um, I've been sort of humming and hurrying whether I will or not, and I've decided not to because uh, there's a gazillion videos out there, guys, about this sort of stuff. So all, what I will do is I'll quickly run you through it, and then you can get onto YouTube uh, and do your own search. 
So I'll take you through it, all right? So here's the e-bike battery, okay? And I've hardwired this e-bike battery to these bus bars here, okay? So effectively, what happens is this solar panel here, when it's connected to the semi-trailer, the wires from this solar panel come down in through the side of this toolbox and I have an Anderson plug there, which when it's connected to the trailer, it gets connected through this wiring thing that I've done here, which you've seen in a previous video. That's it there, it's just a plug. And up in through there is where it goes in through to another plug. And from there, it goes inside the semi-trailer into the electrical compartment where there is a Victron solar charge controller. Now, in that a blue electrical compartment inside the semi-trailer, there is a bunch, there's bus bars in there as well. And that solar charge controller, the Victron one, inside the semi-trailer, goes into the bus bars and the bus bars go into the battery via a, a, a shunt which um, is the uh, the smart BMV which is uh, gives you a readout of your battery performance etc and that Victron charge controller in there that this solar panel charges when everything's um, connected and on mobile has its own um, functionality inside the Victron connect app as well so <clears throat> that being said, what actually happens is when I want to charge the e-bike battery, which is pretty much most of the time, especially when I'm mobile, coming back out of the, um, the electrical compartment in here is another plug. And that plug comes back out and connects up into this one here. And this is connected into the bus bar as well. And now I will show you exactly what I mean. <coughs> so, here we go. So, the, the power coming back from the semi-trailer compartment, the electrical system, comes into these bus bars here. And from this bus bar, I have retrofitted, just with some, um, you know, solar panel click-in connections, and I've connected that to the cord, the power cord for the e-bike battery. Now, before that can go into there, you have to wire up the power coming in, whether it's from solar or just from the battery, into the PV uh, connections in there. So what that does is you can connect solar through there or just battery power. It doesn't matter what's coming through there. It'll handle it just the same. But as I've said before, it's a 12 volt system. And to charge an e-bike battery that's 36 volts, you need uh, upwards of 40 volts or more to charge it. So this here steps it up from 12 volts to 42 but I've got it set at 40 so it's always trickle charging no matter what and there's no chance of me hurting the battery because I'm at 40 volts so that is basically that I've got a little night light in there I don't know if you can see that but that's what that is and uh, <coughs> when the I want to take the prime mover out by itself I simply connect disconnect the uh, semi trailers uh, plug and I plug it in to this plug here this one down under there which then makes it still charge this but with everything disconnected so that's what that's for and that's how that's done there's a gazillion videos online guys showing you all this stuff that's how I learn just like that <coughs> so Without being rude, I'm not here to spoon feed people through this. You know, my time is valuable to me and uh, I've already spent a lot of time on this and I really want to get going, <clears throat> uh, do some traveling and stuff. So, as I said previously, I may at some stage come out with a tutorial for this, 
but I'm not too happy with this black flute, so I'm gonna hold off on that. Also wanted to show you up here, there's an overhang. Now, that wasn't deliberate, it just happened like that because of the width of the solar panel and I wanted to use it. Uh, and the trailer width was smaller. So I just cut the core flute to the same size as the solar panel and attached it that way. But it's worked out pretty good because it gives protection from the rain. They got me a little LED strip there, so it protects all that. And there it is there as well. Oh, maybe didn't put enough Sikaflex on there. Oh, it's coming right off, isn't it? Okay, I'll have to tend to that. Otherwise that's gonna go pear-shaped. Right, now, can't show the electrical box inside because it's under the bed, but that little thing there, white thing down there, that's a CO2 um, alarm system. Reads the CO2, if it gets to dangerous levels, and a really annoying alarm goes off, and it's I've had it go off a few times when I was living in a shipping container because I had a uh, potbelly stove in there, and it got really smoky. So where you have these things is near where your head is, where you sleep. Don't think it's ever going to be an issue because I've got good ventilation in here, but you never know, it's a good thing to have. So, unfortunately, there's some things that may hinder me going on this uh, maiden voyage today, even though I took it for a bit of a trip last night. These side mirrors here, I don't know if you see them, they don't come out enough, so I can't see what's behind. And that's a real issue for me. And my turn signal indicators haven't come either. And I'm going to have turn signal indicators, one up here and one here, and then down the end as well. Uh, somewhere down here on the bars. And they're a uh, click, click button and, you know, left and right. And they work really well. So I'm a little bit scared, actually, uh, to take this on a main road, like a highway. Uh, even though there's a good shoulder on the highway, I just can't see behind me and I don't like that feeling. So the maiden voyage, the real one, where I test out this battery, is just going to have to wait. But in the meantime, I'll play around with it, um, show you as much as I can when I'm available to do so, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks, guys. <laughs> I've never felt it before